Hey guys, Mike the Vike here. Today we're taking a look at the two new attachments that they added to the game recently, the Muzzle Break and Muzzle Boost. These are both two fairly expensive attachments that you can put on your gun, but I've done a lot of testing and I can conclude that both are useful in the right situations and on the right guns. The Muzzle Boost increases the rate of fire of a weapon, but increases the amount of felt recoil so it'll be harder to control but if you can control it you will uh, have more more shots on target potentially the muzzle brake decreases the recoil but it also decreases the accuracy and if you're not super close up this the guns aren't very effective when you're spraying because the the accuracy is just terrible so i would say actually for both of these attachments i would skip or not even try at long ranges but between the two I would say that the rate of fire booster is is better because you're kind of getting the same amount of recoil it's just faster one thing I did notice is I put the uh, the booster on the SMG and I have a feeling like the booster has like a max rate of fire it can do or something like that because this SMG does not that get that much of an improvement Like, there it is, but let's listen to a Thompson. Which I would say is clearly faster. And then let's compare a stock Thompson with no boost. And you can see the gains are a heck of a lot more on this than on the custom with no boost. So there's that. I think, yeah, in conclusion... I would definitely toss a boost on the Thompson and be quite happy. At close quarters you're going to totally dominate because, I mean, the gun already has very little recoil out of the gate, so it's very controllable. For the AK, I, uh, I'm not sure. I, I would say between the two, use the break. Granted though, the inaccuracy is pretty terrible, so... Maybe the rate of fire booster is the better one to use overall, because if you tap with it, you could be pretty darn effective. Here's a couple more demonstrations. Here's an M249 for fun with the rate of fire boost. I would say, especially for this gun, the boost is the way to go, because the break, once again, makes these guns extremely inaccurate. And you should be able to see that once I zoom in, in post. But, uh, they're definitely not worth using. But as you can see here, my bullets are not on target at all. Like, it's, it's uh, pretty garbage. However, if they're close enough, that won't matter, right? Honestly though, since they've already add, added this, I would absolutely love if they added a flash hider. Because that would be sensational. And I think um, I would use that over all of these because still I do think that the muzzle flash is absolutely absurd. I even have a hollow sight. So here's, here's what it looks like without the sight. It is just uh, the death of me, but that's fine. Some people were saying that the attachments are overpowered and on the right gun I would say maybe. But they've actually done a pretty respectable job with keeping these things a little bit balanced. I think a little bit tweaking is in order. But, um, like, I would say, honestly, the, the nerf that the, the break gives you on the um, accuracy is a bit extreme. So I wouldn't recommend it for that. However, at the same time, I mean, it's pretty darn good. And, I mean, if you can tap fire, you do get a heck of a lot less recoil. Some people had an idea that the the booster decreases reload time on something like a bolt. But this is not the case. It just, uh, you know, it doesn't affect these single shot guns like the semi-auto pistol and rifle or the bolts. It, it would only have an effect on the full autos. So guys, my conclusion is that I think that the boost is better overall than the break. But this is just my opinion. Maybe you have a really good experience with the break and you're going to stick with that forever. Of course, keep in mind that both of these items will probably be tweaked over time. But if you haven't given it a shot, I would recommend tossing a boost and a hollow sight on the Thompson because it is quite phenomenal. 
Now, if you're interested in anything else they added this update, they did increase the amount of dungeons and caves per map. So, on a small map, 3,000 map size is actually usable because there's tons of caves and dungeons, which is awesome. So, you should definitely hop on the game if you haven't recently because I, I love that uh, there's more action because people can go to these dungeons and caves a lot quicker. Of course, this is on my Rust server, so if you want to join, there's info in the description. But that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching guys, and I will see you in the next video.